Good afternoon YouTube and welcome back to the Suburban Proletarian. My name is Greg and today's installment has been rather a long time coming. The topic we're going to be covering I addressed in the very first installment of the channel a month and a half ago and that is the Certina DS First Ceramic. We're going to be unboxing this and doing a a short review of it. This is not actually my watch. I mean, it belongs to me, but I'm selling it, so I can't really wring the thing out and give you a full-blown review, but I'll talk a little bit about the Certina DS series in general and uh, talk a little bit about this watch because it really represents a pretty remarkable value. Uh, we'll do that over on the tabletop, but before we do, uh, customary wristwatch check. I am still exhibiting white dial privilege. I'm still wearing my uh, Rado Diastar. We're still in the honeymoon phase, the wearing in period for the watch. It was running about eight and a half seconds fast when I first started wearing it about a week ago. It's now down, I think the last four or five days, it's been run running pretty consistently at right around five and a half seconds per day, plus five and a half seconds per day, which is you know, if you take into account the COSC chronometer certification standards are, I think, minus four to plus six seconds a day, it's, you know, it's running within the parameters of a certified chronometer, which is not too shabby. I'm really, really starting to take a shine to this watch. And, of course, I will be doing a full-blown review of the watch in the not-too-distant future. But that is not the subject of today's installment. Today we're talking about the Sotina. Let's head over to the tabletop and take a look at this baby. Alright guys, so here it is in its pretty standard Swatch Group packaging, the standard black box inside a white sleeve. We'll take the sleeve off and remove that. Inside we have a pretty basic black cardboard box. Again, standard operating procedure for Swatch Group. You pull the lid off, the front flap opens and you remove the actual hinged watch box. Inside we've got um, an international warranty booklet and an instruction manual on analog quartz watches from Certina. Nice. The warranty booklet, I'm not sure, is really any good for anything, though. Certina, while it's very popular in other parts of the world, is there are no authorized dealers, as far as I know, in the United States. Um, Swatch Group does have service centers in the U.S., but I'm not sure that they'll even look at Certinas. So uh, that's one problem with Certinas living in North America. If you buy one, you may be on your own. I don't really know. I haven't looked into that too much. But anyway, the information's there. Let's set that off to the side. And let's look at the actual watch box. Um, let's open this up. And there is our watch. Now, as I said, this is the Certina DS First Ceramic. It's packaged on a, wow, tight-fitting little white pillow there. Um, the box is fairly attractive. It's got that beveled front with the Certina logo on there. But let's get that also out of the way. And let's take a look at the watch itself. Now, I bought this watch through Amazon.com. Uh, and, of course, it came from a secondary retailer. Uh, again, I don't think they're an, eight, an authorized dealer. If they are, they can always correct me in the comments below. Um, as far as I know, they, this is a pretty much a gray market outfit. Um, but I had absolutely no problems. They sent uh, a lot of information. Um, there's a certificate of authenticity from Perfect Timing. And I guess that's just my receipt. But it came nicely packaged. Uh, lots of information. And here is the watch. And it's got the customary plastic on the 
crystal there. We'll just remove that for the time being. So as I said, this is the Certina DS first ceramic. Ceramic refers to the fact that it has a ceramic bezel ring insert. The bezel is 120 clicks. It's not the most positive clicking I've ever heard. It's a little bit mushy. I was kind of surprised by that. Uh, it does have a luminous dot up here at the top, but that's a ceramic insert in the bezel. Uh, of course, you've got the sapphire crystal, and that's a domed sapphire crystal, which is a nice touch for a watch at this price point. And you can see that there's it's double domed. There's very little distortion as you move the watch to the side like this. You can still see the dial very well. As I'm sure you've already noticed, it is a quartz movement. Having said that it's quartz, it's not really the crappiest quartz ever. It is an ETA 955.112. Uh, this is a stalwart workhorse of the Swiss watch industry. The the 955.112 has been used in uh, certainly a lot of Certinas and other mid-tier Swatch Group watches. Um, it's been used by Victorinox in some of their Inox watches. And it's even been rebranded by um, Tag Heuer and Omega in some of their watches. This is a watch, this is a, a movement that's been around for several decades. It tends to be very accurate and extremely reliable. So, you know, if you're put off by quartz, this probably isn't the watch for you. If you're not, um, I would have no shortcomings about buying this watch for my own personal use. Um, so it's a pretty attractive watch. As I've already pointed out, we've got the ceramic bezel insert. We've got the domed sapphire crystal, which they seem to match up nicely. You can see the reflections there, those sweeping arches of the um, of the fluorescent lights over the bench you can see that it's all pretty nicely made very flush fitting crystal now one of my favorite features of this watch is the case back um, case backs are cool because it's something that most people don't see it's mostly there for the owner of the watch and this case back is really cool, and it harks back to the 1960s. I really fell in love with Certina case backs, um, not in the 1960s, I wasn't born yet, but um, when I started seeing vintage Certinas with this type of case back, it really hooked me, and I love this. Look at that high relief turtle motif on the back of the case back. Um, that is just beautiful. Uh, Certina adopted the turtle sometime, I think in the 1960s, they adopted the sea turtle as the logo for their DS watches. DS stands for dual security, and it refers to impact resistance and um, water resistance. And what could be more indicative of impact resistance and water resistance than a sea turtle? Uh, Rolex already had the Oyster, uh, so the Sea Turtle was probably the next best thing. It makes a much, much cooler case back, in my opinion. Look at that. That is just beautiful. I love that. I really do. The DS system was kind of neat. It was. Uh, it incorporated a rubber. There's a rubber ring that goes around the movement itself. That was true in the early mechanical watches, and it's true in this quartz watch. Basically, like a very large diameter o-ring that surrounds the movement and and keeps the uh, movement or in this case the quartz module isolated from the rest of the case and the watch was designed to withstand I think a four meter drop onto a hard surface without any damage um, styling I mean the long narrow lugs the general shape of the case the modest case guards the small crown the baton hands, the stick indices, all of that uh, I think is a pretty clear um, sort of homage to the earliest Rolex Submariners. Uh, it's not very much like any of Certina's early watches, but this is definitely not a heritage piece. It's not meant to 
uh, it's not like so many other dive watches that are coming out today that it's meant to look like it was made in the 1960s. The Certina logo is very modern. The, uh, the ceramic bezel insert is very modern. Um, the domed sapphire crystal, I think, is meant to sort of suggest a domed uh, plastic crystal, but it, it doesn't have that same curve. So it's really not meant to look like anything like that. I think it was mostly designed to give an impression of heritage without actually looking like a heritage model. This watch I think was available on a rubber strap, this leather strap, and it also uh, came on a stainless steel bracelet. I got a good deal on the leather strap version. And uh, this is a pretty nice strap. It's got a uh, deployment clasp rather than a regular uh, traditional buckle. Um, the clasp is signed with the Certina logo. I've left the plastic intact on there. And the, uh, the leather band is, is pretty nice. It is not crocodile. This is just cowhide, I'm sure, or some other type of uh, hide. Uh, which has been embossed in this sort of crocodile reptile print, which I'm not usually a fan of reptile prints on standard leather. I generally feel if you're going to do a crocodile strap, make it out of crocodile. But this one's pretty nicely executed. I don't know how well it'll show up on the camera, but the coloring, um, the polishing on the high spots, uh, the overall finish, it's very nice. It's, uh, it seems like it might take a little bit of breaking in, but it's fairly supple, very smooth. Um, obviously, if you were going to go diving with this watch, it is water resistant to 200 meters, and I guess this particular model appeared in what uh, Certina classified it in their, I think they call it their aquatic series, or aqua series. Uh, it's definitely designed to be a dive watch. It's got a screw down crown which, by the way, is nicely signed with the DS logo. So, I mean, ostensibly it's a dive watch, but, of course, you're not going to, you're not going to want to go uh, diving in salt water with this uh, rather elegant leather strap on here. But uh, it does have a fairly standard uh, set of lugs on it. You could certainly fit this with a NATO strap or an aftermarket rubber strap or an aftermarket bracelet for actual diving if you were so inclined to do that. But I don't think people are going to buy this as a dive watch. This is a vacation watch. It's a casual watch. It might even be, eh, it might even be a suitable for business attire depending on your, your standards or your, your employer's standards. Um, but... If this was the only watch you owned and you were going on a Caribbean vacation that was going to involve some snorkeling or recreational scuba diving, you could certainly use this watch to do that. So Certina does have a rather rich history. They're not an incredibly old brand. They're not, in, they're not particularly well known uh, here in North America, in Canada or the United States, but um, very well respected in Europe and other parts of the world. And... This is just a really neat watch. It's a fairly unique watch. Um, you're not going to see a lot of these on the street in New York City, for instance. It's just a cool watch. I like it. I wish I could keep it. I wish I could wear it and give you guys a more thorough review, but unfortunately that's not in the cards. Um, I've got to keep myself funded and this hobby funded some way, and the Rado has taken precedence over this watch so this one's going up on the auction block um it'll be on ebay in a couple of days so it's kind of sad but i'm glad that i've had a chance to review it and look at it and um i don't really know what else more i could say about it so let's head back over to the bookshelves and wrap things up well there you have it guys that is a really fantastic watch. I really, really wish I could keep it myself. I love that Sea Turtle logo on the back of the case. Unfortunately, I cannot, I just cannot keep it. It's got to be sold. The Certina DS First Ceramic is a nice watch. It's a nice little, I guess, desk diver. Ironically, the Certina DS Series was originally designed as a rugged use watch. Um, it was kind of an earlier, mid-20th century 
answer to the Casio G-Shock, or I guess more appropriately we would say that the G-Shock was an answer to the Certina DS. It was created along a, cer a set of design parameters that were somewhat similar to the G-Shocks. I think the G-Shock was designed to survive a 10 meter drop onto a hard surface. The Certina DS, when it was first introduced in the 1950s, was designed or was intended to withstand a four meter drop onto a hard surface. So it was kind of designed along the same principles and it got used for a lot of the same purposes. Um, the DS was the first watch to summit certain Himalayan peaks. Uh, the DS was used by the United States Navy in their Sea Lab and Tic Type programs, uh, their underwater um, dwelling environment programs alongside such watches as the Rolex Submariner and the Rolex Sea Dweller. Now, I'm certainly not trying to put the Certina in the same class as a Rolex, but it has traveled in some pretty good company. Uh, some people dismiss Certina as not having any history. They clearly have not done their research. I mean, if, the, if it's good enough for the United States Navy dive programs, it's probably good enough for people like you and me. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this installment of the Suburban Proletarian. If you did, please click the like button. If you hated it, go ahead and click the dislike button. Uh, but if you did enjoy it and you'd like to see more videos like this, please consider subscribing to my channel. YouTube is no longer about total views. They are all about subscribers. And every subscription goes a long way to keeping me here on YouTube. It doesn't cost a penny. It takes a single click of a mouse or a stab at your screen to do so, and you can always unsubscribe in the future. Um, so, if you do subscribe, and I do survive, I hope to see you here next time. Later, guys.